Hey guys, today I'm back in Besiege and I want to try making a multi-stage rocket. Now this is probably going to end up extremely over-engineered, but let's get right into it. So starting down the sandbox, the first thing I'm doing here is putting down some cannons. Now I want to put these down and just test how good they are at actually launching me up. Now I also put down a shrapnel cannon and that's so that I can copy its four times value to all the other cannons. Normally they're capped at two times, but with that I can actually make it four times and you see it was actually a pretty good launch. So I wanted to expand this out and use even more cannons, but I also wanted to add in some ballast. I wasn't sure how well the cannons were going to do under load, and they seemed to be okay, but their height was diminished quite a bit. And loading this up on the other side as well, they didn't seem to be super well balanced. It's rotating, and I'm also moving slightly to the side. Now, I'm going to need some sort of feeder mechanism, and I wanted to start on that here. Now, at first, I just built up a big wood platform, and I built up a second one right beneath it. On this, I'm going to start building up a tube, and I'm going to use bombs here as my main source of fuel. Now, to build up my tube, I'm going to use some panels here. And you see, I can actually curve them slightly and I also turn them into glass and that gives this nice tube look and I figured the bomb should be able to fit right in here and that means that they can't move around too much and I was hoping that would prevent them from exploding. This though wasn't exactly the case and they still explode really easily. So I moved that bomb down quite a bit and I also shrunk the tube and that was to give even less place that these bombs really can't move around at all. Now to fix the tube in place I also started pinning it with these blocks and I'm doing it right on the outside. This is that the bombs are still able to fall right through and once I finished that up, I need a way to dispense these one at a time. Now, I was thinking of using a piston for this, and if I time it perfectly, I can have it expand and contract so exactly one bomb gets through. Now, after getting rid of some extra blocks here, I gave it a test now, and it seemed to sort of work, but the bombs are exploding right on it. So I had to move the bombs down a little bit, and at least at first, let one bomb through, but then the second bomb just exploded. I think the problem is that just it falling on the piston is enough for it to explode. So to prevent this from being so big of an issue, I added on a second piston here, and this one starts contracted, I'll have the other one start expanded, and one bomb can get through, and they'll just keep falling on alternating pistons, and that means that they'll always only let one bomb fall through. Now the system seemed to work pretty well, so I gave it a test with five bombs here, and it's also pretty fast, so I figured this would probably be good enough to keep dropping bombs to launch me up. Now the next thing I wanted to do was figure out some way to have the bombs explode and actually push me up, and that's what this ring is for. The idea is that as the bomb falls through it, it's going to blow up right below it, and that's going to push this ring up and hopefully not blow up all the other bombs. Now I added in some flamethrowers at first and I was thinking of using these to blow up the bomb but I realized them just falling on the flamethrower is actually a pretty good solution as well but it was a little too close to the other bombs and then they just all exploded. So I tried lowering it down even more and after I did that I did some optimizations to the top. I just got rid of all the wood and replaced it with ballast. This is that they couldn't accidentally catch on fire and then I the bombs. Now in my first test here I gave it a shot and it didn't seem to work so well. I could tell it was sort of moving it but it was hard to tell if the bombs were exploding exploding because the other bomb exploded them, or if they got shocked somehow and that caused them to explode. Now I started to add in a ring here, and I also did this in slow motion, and I could tell it didn't blow up the other bombs immediately, so I was hoping once I finished up this ring, that would be enough to somehow fix all my problems. This though didn't really seem to work, so I decided to raise it up a bit further, I thought maybe that would help, and also I doubled up the amount of bombs I had here. This might seem like a bad idea, but I'm gonna need more power anyway, so if I can't deal with this, then it's gonna be a big issue. I also thought though adding in more bombs would even out the power a bit more and it wouldn't just randomly rotate. After getting everything pinned in place you can see here they dispense in basically the same way and they drop at about the same time. Now because one bomb exploding will make all the other ones explode at the same time I figured I might as well add four of these in and that would add more power and it would more evenly distribute the explosions. And once I did that I started adding in that ring in the middle for the bombs to push up on. Now the very basic version of this did seem to work so I wanted to expand it out a bit more and get more surface area for the bombs to actually push. Now I just braced it all together here, and at first the bombs seemed to sometimes get through, but they'd sometimes hit it, and I realized it's going to have to expand it out. This wasn't amazing, because it means that a lot more of the force is going outward instead of up, so I'm losing a little bit of energy here, and even after moving it out a lot, it still seemed to mostly not work. So I moved it out again, and with this, I ended up unpinning it as the bombs were falling to the bottom, and you can see it did launch this up, so a lot of force is getting imparted, and I thought maybe this had a chance of working. So I just made sure to pin this to the top part, and this means that as the ring gets pushed, it'll also push up on the dispensers. Now in my first test here, it didn't seem to push it up at all, but in the second one, it 
sort of just seemed to act weird. Sometimes it would go off to the side, sometimes it would get really glitchy like this, and I didn't really know what to do next. So I started bracing everything together more, and I was hoping this would stop so many problems, and I also moved the bombs further up from the ring. I thought maybe the bombs were exploding immediately, but I really wasn't sure, and moving them further up, I thought at least had a chance at clearing things up a bit more. Now, I got it to stop glitching out, but now it was still either moving to the side, or it very rarely, it actually did start to move up, but only after all the bombs exploded. Now, I tried expanding out this glass tube a bit more, and I thought giving the bombs a bit more room might prevent them from exploding, and I also improved the bottom system a bit more, so they actually braced together, but things did not seem to be going well still. It would just instantly explode at all the bombs, and then it would go flying. Now, I wanted to do a test off on the side, and this was just to figure out a way to get those bombs to not immediately explode. So I put a bomb on the bottom, and this would just launch this entire structure up, and once I had that in place, I added on some more ballast to the top, and this was that I could hold in a bomb. Now you can see I got that in place here, and with that done, once the bomb explodes at the bottom, the one at the top immediately goes as well. But I thought maybe if I added in some springs, I could prevent that from happening. And it sort of seemed to work, but all the springs immediately got bottomed out, and that just made the bomb explode. So I held it in a bit better, I also increased the stiffness of the bombs, and with that done, I wanted to copy it over to my main design here, and see how it would do. So I added on some extra springs, and with that, I just made sure to brace everything right to the springs. But I realized with all the extra weight and explosions here, I'm probably gonna want to double up these springs, so I did that, and I got everything braced together, and I wanted to test it out. And it still seemed to immediately explode. But I was kind of wondering what was going on, because it did seem like the springs compressed. And I tried this in super slow-mo, and you could tell now, the whole structure starts to move up on the bottom, but the bombs actually aren't moving at all. And that's because the loader pistons are bending down, and after they bend to a certain angle, I think it pushes them into the glass tube, and that causes it to explode. So to keep those upright, I added in a swivel joint, and I also added one onto the spring. This means that as it starts to push up, it should also push up on the swivel joint, but if the piston wants to pull in, it should also be able to do that. But this also still seemed to explode in slow motion, so I just tried directly bracing it, and this actually did seem to work. You can tell the bombs in the tube that I just messed with are actually moving up, while all the other ones are still staying in place. Now, I added in another spring here, just for a little bit more cushioning, and after after that, I made sure to brace all of the tubes together, and it was still able to dispense, which was good, and giving it a test to launch up, it actually sort of seemed to work, but you'll notice that most of these tests, it's just failing on. It still seems to explode immediately, and these bombs are really hard to control. Now, I decided instead of bombs, I wanted to try using cannons. Now, I showed these off before, and they still have a lot of pushing power, but I figured that since they can't just randomly explode, they should be a lot easier to manage. Now, the fundamental design is actually really similar here. Basically, I just have this large glass tube and just had to fit the cannons in it. It's a little harder to figure out their hitbox because they're kind of weird, but after getting those all in place here, I loaded up three of them and it seemed to hold in fine. Now the dispenser mechanism works in exactly the same way too. The only difference is that now since the cannons are longer, I actually need the second one to be slightly inside the tube to be able to hold the other cannon in place. Now the loading system pretty much as good as before, I wanted to add some way in to automatically detonate the cannons. Now I could set keybinds for each of these, but I figured a better way of doing it would be to add in a flamethrower and just heat them up. That causes them to explode every time, but if I just drop them straight through here, the cannons end up just randomly exploding and completely destroying my loading mechanism. So I thought what I was going to need here is a grabber, and as the cannons fall down, they should catch on this, and then I could ignite them. Now, it was a little bit too high at first, so I ended up having to move it down a bit, and at least in this first test here without the flamethrower, I'm able to shoot it, and it seems to work, but now it seemed to be a little weird. So I added in a pin, and after that, it did seem to work. It shot, and I was able to launch off the second cannon as well, and this one also seemed to work. I just moved around some of the loading mechanism, and after that, I just wanted to see how many of these I could load in a row without any problems, and it seemed to get through the whole stack with pretty much no problems. So that's when I added in a couple of timer blocks, and after that, I added in a sensor. And what these are going to do, they're going to automatically see when the cannon gets in place, then it's going to automatically start the flamethrower, that'll blow up the cannon, and then it'll immediately drop it off the grabber, and I should be able to keep repeating that. And testing it here, it actually does seem to work. I have to manually drop them out of the tube, but it does seem to automatically fire them off, and to solve that other problem, I just added another timer, and this one automatically opens and closes the pistons, so it should be a fully automatic system to keep dropping these. Now, I also braced everything together, and I got rid of a lot of pins. This was to prepare it for when I eventually turn this into a plane, but I got everything put together here, and given it a test, it's a little wobbly, but it does seem to work in pretty much the same way as before. Now, I decided next just to copy this over, because I knew I was going to need a little bit more force than one tube could handle. So, I've got two of those in place, I copied it over again, and now I have four of these. And I only have one flamethrower running at the moment, but 
but it actually does seem to drop all of them pretty much exactly as I'd expect. So with a little modification, this should work out fine. I did realize I forgot one thing though. I'm gonna be running this in zero gravity, which means that I need some way to pull down the cannons that isn't gravity. And I thought this shouldn't be too big of a deal. So I started out with this long pole and I'm just gonna pull it into the tube using a spring. Now, when I originally put this in place, it actually did seem to work when I have gravity enabled. The problem though is in zero gravity, it doesn't really seem to work at all. They all bind up on the bottom and they seem to just get really stuck. So I tried lowering the strength of the springs to hopefully pull it in a little less hard, but this didn't really seem to work at all. And then I just cheated in negative values just to see what would happen and it didn't seem to change anything at all as well. So I'm not sure why springs are kind of locked at a certain strength, but this just is not gonna work for what I need. That's when I swapped out the water cannons. Now, the reason I went with this is that when the water hits something, it should give it a little bit of force. And I was hoping that there'd be a much smaller force applied to everything and hopefully it'd be better. Now, if I got that first one in place, it actually did seem to push some stuff down. So I did in a second one as well. And this one's lower down. I'm hoping this one's gonna prevent that binding at the bottom. And once I did that with a little bit of rotating, it actually did seem to push them down almost perfectly. There's a few misses here and there, but overall it did get through all the cannons. So that should work. Now, I also decided to get rid of the sensors and I put in another timer. What this is gonna do is automatically load in the cannons at a set interval instead of detecting when the cannon drops. It speeds things up a little bit and with the zero gravity stuff going on, occasionally cannons miss their target and I don't want the whole machine to just stop when that happens. Now I went ahead as well and I started copying over the water cannons. I realized I probably should have done this before I made four copies of the whole mechanism, but it should work out fine and after I got those all in place here, I gave it a test here and you can see the cannons are all firing and if you look at the bottom here, you can see everything is just collecting there. Now I also wanted to give it a test where I released it from the pins, but you'll notice it's going down into the ground really fast and that's the water cannons. For whatever reason, as they push down, they're imparting more force than they're generating, so it ends up not being net zero, which is a little weird. Now I balanced that out, I added in some flying blocks, and I wanted to have these nearly perfectly cancel out the water cannons, but just barely not do it. This is to prove that the cannons were actually generating the thrust and not the flying blocks. At first though, the flying blocks were a little too powerful and I started going into the air. That's when I noticed though, I have a big stability issue and this thing will rotate around however it wants. Now to solve this, I added in a couple more ballasts and on those, I put down some wheels. I'm just gonna use these as reaction wheels and I'm able to spin them the one side or the other and that rotates the entire structure. Now I put these on both the axes I care about and after that, I gave it a test here and it did seem to work, but it was still a little unstable. So to hopefully improve that, I added on some wings here and once I get up to speed, these should keep me really straight and that'll just allow the cannons to go to town and generate me some speed. And in this test, you can see it's actually working pretty well here. I'm going up in the air. So with all that done, I needed to add on a bottom stage. Now I need this stage because I need to get up the speed before those wings take effect. And in order to do that, I added on some ballast here and this is so I can attach a lot of cannons. I figured cannons would be a pretty good way to go here since they have a lot of power. And also I could tell them to explode at a really good set time. I can also detonate them in the air really easily. So it just seemed like a good choice. So after getting those all loaded up, I just used some braces connected to the body here and wanted to give it a test. Now firing it at first, I got up to a really good speed here and I was able to start on that top stage. So with that done, I actually deleted the braces and that's so I could add it in decouplers. These will automatically drop off the bottom stage when I want. And when I give it a test here, it actually seems to work perfectly. The one thing I don't like though, is I gave them a little bit of decoupler speed. So notice that it actually starts to push down immediately. What I'd rather have is absolutely no force on them so that as the top stage starts to accelerate, you really see it go. And after I did that, I wanted to expand the bottom stage. I figured it'd be a really easy way to get more speed on this. And after I got that expanded out, it was looking a little funny. And when I went to test it, it really started to deform. That's actually kind of bad because that means I'm losing a lot of energy in the bending of the ballast. So I tried bracing it up a bit better, but this only helped marginally. It was still bending a lot and I really didn't like that. So to get more speed, I added in some wood here and this is like I add in some bombs beneath it. I was just hoping to blow this wood up really, really fast. And by doing that, I'd be able to force myself up really quickly at first. Now this trick only works on the ground because I don't really want to carry bombs with me, but I figured it might be a really good way to get a quick boost. So after I braced it up here, I also expanded it out a bit more and finally here giving it a test, it just seemed to be a little weird. It didn't really give me that much speed and things deformed really badly. So I deleted my braces and instead the new plan was just to drop the cannons right on the bombs. And you see, I did go up in the air a lot, but the only reason for that was because the cannons went off during the explosion. Adding in back the wood actually gave me more speed as well, but it was sort of the same story. The second stage was going off at the same time and I thought I could do better than that. So I went back to just these decouplers and I put back down some ballasts and I was going for a lot less cannons. I figured with a better cannon placement, 
spent, I might be able to get a really similar amount of speed with a much more efficient design. And that seemed to be the case here. Now I was doing pretty well at the top stage, but I thought if I added in another stage, I might be able to get all the way to the sky limit. So that's just what I did here. I braced on the second stage, added on more decoupler so I could drop it off again. And you see, loaded up that bottom stage, able to fire off the stage as well. And after that, I'm able to get this top stage going. Now I had the key mindset set, so when I launch off the top stage, it does the side stage as well. And as the cannons in this very top stage start to fire, I actually start to overtake that stage, which means it actually is adding on some speed. While I was testing though, I had one last problem. When I went to fire off, you'll notice all the cannons at the top stage are going as well. And I spent a long time trying to figure out what was going on, but for whatever reason, they were going whenever I hit a key, or whenever they got jostled a little bit too much. I'm really not sure why that happened, I guess it's just a weird glitch, but setting the cannons to shoot on none instead of C completely fixed the problem, and after that, it was working just as well as before. And you can see here, some final tests. So guys, thanks for watching. This is definitely a very overcomplicated design, but that's sort of what I was going for here, and I'm glad I got this reloading cannon thing to actually work. So, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you like the video, make sure to like the video, and otherwise, till next time.